And I think that's what they're not prepared for. They're not prepared for Democrats to be this aggressive, this in their face. What I'm hoping is that what I'm hoping Marjorie and these others see is that when they want to go off the rails and they want to, you know, go be- below decorum, no problem. I'm going to be there every single time. We're giving them a taste of their own medicine. And, and what we're exposing is not only can they not handle it, not only are a lot of them like snowflakes, but, but also it's setting them off their game. I know Democrats want to be better than them, and I, I, I want to be better than them, and I don't want to sink the hearings into this. But unfortunately, we have to fight fire with fire. Former First Lady Michelle Obama once famously suggested that when Republicans go low, Democrats should go high. It's a beautiful sentiment, but its political effectiveness has proven questionable at best, not just during her husband's presidency, but especially today. Under Donald Trump, Republicans have coarsened political discourse and politics in general with their cruelty and their bigotry and their stupidity and their sensationalism. And in last week's TMZ-style reality TV show version of a congressional hearing about Hunter Biden of all people, we finally saw viral moments of fed-up Democrats taking the gloves off against their bad-faith Republican colleagues. And at least one of them since then has gone on the record declaring a rhetorical war against MAGA Republicans, suggesting that perhaps the rest of his party is finally ready to do the same. And we've got to talk about it. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video, video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert buttons before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, I am hyped about this video. We have several clips to play. As you know, if you follow this channel at all, one of the things I crave above all others is a ruthless Democratic Party. Not because I wish that we lived in a world where ruthless political parties were necessary, but because I recognize that is the world we live in, and Democrats by and large are much too feckless, whereas Republicans are going full bore. They are taking the gloves off and for the worst possible reasons and the worst possible policies behind the worst possible leaders. Democrats don't have that problem, but we do need to start throwing metaphorical elbows, which brings me to Jared Moskowitz. Okay, He's one of the freshman Democrats in the House of Representatives alongside Jasmine Crockett, Dan Goldman, Maxwell Frost, and others. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, they are bringing a fire to this party. He has gone on the record, and it's gone. It it it, it really hypes me up. But just to set the stage, I want to remind you of how Moskowitz handled the congressional hearing last week about Hunter Biden in just one clip. And so, again, because the, the gentle lady from from the gentle lady from Georgia, uh, I know is such an advocate for women's rights, as she mentioned, uh, and is so concerned uh, uh, about grooming, and apparently we, we don't have any standards here anymore. Again, I, I just want to remind, remind my colleagues, because you know I, I don't want them to forget about hypocrisy, okay? I, I don't want them to forget about hypocrisy. And so that's Jared Moskowitz holding up a giant poster of Donald Trump with Jeffrey Epstein, and it triggered so many Republicans in that hearing. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the chairman of that committee, James Comer, who went on Laura Ingram on the Fox Propaganda Network afterwards talking smack about Jared Moskowitz. Was he on Saved by the Bell, that show? He looks so familiar. Um, uh, Congressman, uh, uh, why, not let, him, why not let him speak? Why, not, why didn't you let him speak, Moskowitz says? Well, well, that Moskowitz, well, look, Moskowitz has less credibility than George Santos had when he was a member of Congress. He's the new George Santos. George Santos, of course, referring to the corrupt, federally indicted, internationally indicted Republican congressman who eventually even Republicans were forced to jettison because he is so corrupt. Not that Republicans are the only corrupt uh, or have are exclusively corrupt, right? There's corruption even within the Democratic Party, Bob Menendez, but it's considerably less so compared to Republicans. Now, having set the stage, okay? Uh, Jared Moskowitz was interviewed by Ben Micellis of the Midas Touch Network, and what he's about – we're going to play the whole clip. It's two minutes, about two minutes and 20 seconds long. Brace yourselves. This will hype you up, folks, more than anything else that we've discussed probably in the past several months. In response to that, you were ready of Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. Why did you hold that up, Congressman? Well, again, uh, I mean, it, she's over there giving a speech, you know, opening the door about pedophiles and grooming and kids and young girls. And I'm thinking to myself, see, they, they just live in a bubble. Uh, and so, OK, we want to we, we want to we wanna play this game. No problem. Let me let me bring out the one of just a dozen photos 
of Donald Trump and, and, and Epstein. And as soon as that photo came out, you should have looked at the Republicans. They were like ostriches. Each one, like their head immediately went below their desk because, you know, they're all out there attacking Epstein for other people. And they forget that Donald Trump and him were super close. In fact, Donald Trump commented that, oh, Jeffrey likes them really young. Well, how would he know that? Well, how would he know? Well, well, some people are saying, Ben, that, you know, he was there. Uh, and, and so, yeah, look, if that if that's what they're going to do, OK, I know Democrats want to be better than them and I, I, I want to be better than them and I don't want to sink the hearings into this. But unfortunately, we have to fight fire with fire and, and I'm not going to let them do these hearings where they pretend like the guy that they basically kneel to and take commands from and is in charge of their entire party. Right. Doesn't pal around and didn't pal around with a pedophile. I'm not going to let them get away with that uh, a, a, as they as they try to paint Democrats uh, a, as as something different. And what I'm hoping is that what I'm hoping Marjorie and these others see is that when they want to go off the rails and they want to, you know, go be- below decorum, no problem. I'm going to be there every single time prepared. Again, sometimes you're not going to see these boards that I make because, you know, we will have a regular hearing and I don't need to show them. But I'm going to be ready. And I think that's what they're not prepared for. They're not prepared for Democrats to be this aggressive, this in their face. Um, uh, uh, you know, and that's what I think a lot of the members of Oversight, led by Jamie Raskin uh, on our side, are doing this year, uh, is that we're giving them a taste of their own medicine. And, and what we're exposing is not only can they not handle it, not only are a lot of them like snowflakes, but, but also it's setting them off their games. And we're sp- I could probably just end the video there. That is music to my ears. Moskowitz is so good at this. He's so witty. He's so clever. He's incisive with his rhetoric and his questions. And again, it's not just him. It's Jasmine Crockett. It's uh, Maxwell Frost. It's Dan Goldman. It's not even just the freshman class. Jamie Raskin is like feeding off their energy. The elder statesman. AOC typically brings it. I mean, folks, this is the future of the Democratic Party. And if they can do this, if they can be ruthless rhetorically when necessary and strategically and cling to their progressive values and hopefully grow the progressive values into progressive policy, the Democratic Party may finally be a party that is truly worthy of the support that polit- political expedience forces us to give it, certainly when we're in a duopoly up against the Republican Party, which is infinitely worse on all levels. Moscow, this, this picture went viral of Moskowitz holding the picture up behind or near uh, Jamie uh, James Comer's chair. Again, I love that. I love that energy because he's right. Marjorie Taylor Greene and so many Republicans cast all kinds of aspersions about the moral credibility of the left and progressives and liberals and the Democratic Party and blue cities and blue states suggesting that there's sexual impropriety there. I mean, they just go below the belt time and time again. Think about all the terrible things that Donald Trump and his supporters have said about Democrats and his opponents and his critics. And we don't bring a fraction of that. And I'm not saying that we need to match them in literally every instance, but I am saying exactly what Moskowitz is saying. This is, I mean, it's, it, this is stuff that I've talked about in previous videos. You need to show that you're willing to throw down with them rhetorically and that you're better at it. You think about it, Raskin and Moskowitz and Goldman and Crockett and AOC and all the other, they're just smarter. They're wittier. They're cleverer. They have the tools that if we want to throw verbal and rhetorical elbows against the Republicans, we're so much better than they are. Are they really prepared for that heat or that smoke, as Gen Z would say? I've got Jamie Raskin here, a clip in which he drops a certain F-bomb, brace yourselves, that a lot of people hesitate to use against this version of the Republican Party. Claim my time. I think in both cases, I mean, there, there were a lot of words there, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, but I think you're referring to the auto loan repayment with Hunter Biden. You're referring to the James Biden repayment. But <clears throat> if you've got documented receipts of foreign governments giving money directly to President Joe Biden, that's an outrageous violation of the Monuments Clause, like the $7.8 million that Donald Trump pocketed while he was president, which for some reason you guys don't care about because you think the Constitution only applies to Democrats and not to Donald Trump because, hey, that, you know, that's an that's a identifying characteristic of an authoritarian political party. It's got 
uh, a charismatic leader whose word is considered above the Constitution, above the rule of law. You refuse to accept the results of democratic elections that don't go your way if you're an authoritarian party. And then you refuse to disavow or you embrace political violence as an instrument for obtaining and maintaining political power. So you guys didn't like when uh, President Biden said that your party under Donald Trump has fallen into semi-fascist ways of operation. If the shoe semi-fits, you semi-wear it. Okay. Love it. OK. And again, different style of rhetoric than Jared Moskowitz. But in the Jamie Raskin professorial style, he's bringing the heat. We need this. We need all of them to do this. We need to push back again and again and again, rhetorically and in terms of messaging and propaganda and persuasion. Absolutely. freaking lutely And I want to give another example outside the realm of rhetoric. OK, it's, it's relevant to something that's happening with respect to one of Donald Trump's many court cases, the classified documents case in Florida. The person presiding over that case is Judge Aileen or Eileen Cannon, and she was a Trump appointee out of Florida. And a lot of people have been nervous ever since she was uh, appointed to preside over that case because, I mean, she bent over backwards before to accommodate Trump, had to be you know, rebuked by her conservative legal superiors, right? She bent over backwards to accommodate Trump, and now she's in a position to do it again, and in many cases she has. We're not going to get too far in the details, but it was reported that in the Mar-a-Lago case, Cannon just refused to enforce a routine deadline, and it's entirely clear she has no intention of letting this case go to trial before the election or possibly ever. As somebody else points out, for the folks logging on and reading Cannon's Midnight Order, yes, she can do that. No, there is nothing to appeal. No, it's not a basis to seek recusal. It is what it is. It's very unfortunate. But as I point out, feckless Dick Durbin, he is the Senate Democrat chairman of the Judiciary Committee, permits the Republican Party to block Biden's district court nominees via blue slips. Okay, This is a tweet of mine from back in September. Here's the thing. Judge Cannon was randomly assigned the Trump case, and that probably wouldn't have happened if there were more judges in Florida. And the reason there are fewer judges in Florida than there ought to be is because of a Senate tradition which allows the senators of a particular state to effectively veto a sitting president's nominees if they don't like that person. So the two Republicans, the two senators from Florida – are two Republicans, Marco Rubio and Rick Scott, and they have submitted blue slips for many of President Biden's nominees. The blue slip can be removed at any time. The majority can get away, can do away with blue slips. And here's the thing. Republicans did it under Donald Trump for, I believe it was circuit court judges. Okay, They just took away the blue slip. They took away the tradition which would have allowed Democrats to veto many of Trump's nominees. They just took it away so Trump could ram through as many nominees as possible. Democrats could have done the same here. They could still do the same for as long as they have the majority to allow Biden to cram a liberal or progressive judge into every damn vacancy that he possibly could. And if he'd done that in time, maybe Aileen Cannon would not be the presiding judge of Trump's case. You reap what you sow. And Dick Durbin has been feckless and cowardly and too much of an institution. Republicans don't care about decorum and they don't care about institutions and they've proven it time and time again. So when people say, well, if Dick Durbin does it, Republicans are going to do something worse. They're going to do something worse anyway the moment it's convenient. Why would Dick Durbin wait? I will give Dick Durbin credit for something. We did a video about it a couple months ago. He rammed through two of President Biden's uh, nominees. Um, with a simple majority vote, brute force majority, and subpoenas for two conservative benefactors of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. And you may recall, Republicans went bananas. They flipped out in that hearing. They were yelling. They were shouting. They were furious because for once, Dick Durbin played politics the way Republicans do all the time. This is the lesson. I'm not saying do it recklessly. I'm not saying doing it do it thoughtlessly. But when it's strategically important, I think Democrats should be ruthless in terms of policy, in terms of propaganda, in terms of persuasion, in terms of rhetoric. They need to show Republicans that if you want to fight dirty, we're willing to do it too, and we're willing to do it better. I love this energy from Jared Moskowitz. I hope it continues. I can't speak for everybody, but I know for a lot of people like me, it would really excite the base to finally see that the Democrats are rhetorically and in terms of policy willing to be fighters. Let me know what you think in the comments.